I want to talk to you about the different qualities of the divine. We'll just go through each one and talk about how we can use those. For one thing, if you understand the qualities of the divine, it's easier for you to relate to the divine and to call the divine into your life and use it very practically. If you have any kind of problem that needs to be addressed, one of the easiest ways to deal with that problem is to name the problem and then start to consider a quality in place of the problem. Pivot from the problem to the quality of the divine. And you can think of it as almost like divine rays are bombarding the problem, transforming it and clearing it up. And it works like magic. (laughs) You can also go through the entire range of these different qualities of the divine if you don't know which quality might be addressing your problem. Let's just go through them all, starting with the quality of the divine called life, the principle of life, infinite life. And I I associate this with the sun and with the archangel Mikael. You don't have to think about the archangels if that's not something that resonates with you. If you're a person who thinks in terms of deities, you might think of the god Apollo or soul, or raw, and that's fine as well. Understanding that all the different gods, all the different names of God, are just different colors on the spectrum, different colors of the rainbow, but there's only one force, one power. And this is just one aspect, one quality of God. So the life principle itself. You can tune into that life principle just by tuning into the beating of your heart. You can just feel the beating of your heart and you recognize that you're not making that happen any more than you're making the sunshine right now. You're not creating the sun and you're not creating your heartbeat. You are an expression of that life principle. And the principle of life doesn't end. And in that regard, that's what we mean when we say there is no death. Death doesn't exist, not from the point of view of the sun, The sun doesn't rise and set, it just appears to from our point of view of the earth. It looks like the the sun comes and goes, rises and sets, but from the sun's point of view, it's just eternal, just constant. Now, even in the case of the physical sun, yes, the sun will have a lifespan. The sun will eventually die, but life won't die. The sun is simply a symbol of what we might call the eternal sun or the universal sun and that which is the source of all that is. You can consider how life never ends. Things come and go. People's bodies die. People's bodies are born. Things seem to change in our world, but life doesn't end. No matter what dictator comes or goes, no matter what diseases come or go, life does not end. We can annihilate the entire planet and life won't end. So life is constant. When we tune into the principle of life itself, all of those other problems stop being of any significance to us. So you can tune in on that principle, that life principle. And when you associate yourself and recognize just even thinking about your heart beating, when you associate with that life principle, then you become in alignment with it. So if you're experiencing any problems with your body, any problems with death, any problems with anything like that, you can tune into that life principle and watch those problems either melt away and become non-existent or move into a place where you understand them in such a way that you are no longer bothered by the problems. Next is the quality called soul. That one force, that one power, that one source that many call God starts to individuate itself as you. Imagine who you are beyond your ego mind, beyond your personality, beyond the storyline, beyond the body who you are as an eternal soul. Perfectly unique, but at the same time connected. You think about 
the sun and you see little rays of light from the sun, that's a symbol of you as a soul. You're not going to see that ray of light separate from the sun. You see that light emanate from the sun, extend itself from the sun. So we call that light in extension. That's who you are as a soul, light in extension. As that soul, you have all of the privileges of being part of that holy, royal family. You are a rich, wealthy, healthy, entitled prince or princess, ray of light that extends as this individual. That's very different than an ego mind. An ego mind is not an individual. An ego wants to be separate completely, wants to have autonomy. But a soul doesn't want autonomy. A soul understands I can't have autonomy. If I have autonomy, I would cease to exist because I'm an emanation, I'm an extension. So the soul would never want autonomy. The ego has this bizarre, insane idea that it wants to be separate and distinct. But the soul understands that that's not even a concept that it would entertain. So when you are having any kind of fear, any kind of trouble that is ego-based, that would be fear-based, you can remind yourself of who you are as a soul and that you predate, if you will, this ego, this personality, this storyline, this body, and perhaps have come again and again and again into different incarnations, if that's a concept that's interesting to you. But even that will um, demonstrate to you the eternality of who you are as a soul. And that perhaps you want to come into this world of separation to have different lessons and sensual experiences, experiences within the sensual world. But understanding that the sensual world is not who you are as a soul, you are much greater than any of your senses. And you are so beloved Just like a sunbeam is beloved by the sun, you are so beloved by your creator. And you aren't separate either. That's the other thing that people think of, oh, God is so far away from me. The goddess is so high up. No, it's the closest thing that there can be. Just like the beam of light is not far away from the sun, it's an extension of the sun. You're just part of it. You are in that regard, God. You're not the God, you're not the creator, but you're certainly an extension of that creator, certainly have all of the rights and privileges of that creator. The soul is related to the moon and to the archangel Gabriel. The next quality of the divine is the quality of spirit. And spirit is who and what you are as the fabric of your being. God is spirit, goddess is spirit, you are spirit, we're all spirit. Now, spirit is related to Mars and to the archangel Samael. Spirit is unassailable. Spirit can't be destroyed. Spirit is completely infallible. There's absolutely nothing that can come up against spirit. And it's good to know that's who you are, that there's nothing to fear because you are spirit. To try to attack spirit is similar to shooting bullets at a beam of light. It doesn't do a thing to it. There's nothing in this world that can harm you because you are spirit. And when you feel vulnerable, when you feel like you're capable of being harmed or attacked, you have the ability to realign yourself with that concept of spirit. Spirit is that which cannot be destroyed, cannot be harmed. You rip away everything that you can think of from the world, anything that can die, anything that can be changed, anything that can be destroyed, and what's left over is spirit. You as spirit not only are infallible and unassailable, but eternal and eternally beautiful, shining light. 
So that's where sometimes we get this idea of spirit as being Mars, as being this divine warrior. But remember that the angelic understanding, Samael, as the angelic understanding of what war is, conquering in a way that everybody wins, conquering in a way that all is well, that's something that we can't conceive of from our perspective as separated selves here, egos here in the world. We, we only think in terms of winners and losers here. But from an angelic point of view, there is no losing. There's only spirit. And since there's only spirit, there's only winning. There's only thriving. And you can only thrive as a spirit. So reminding yourself of who you are as spirit boy, that is something else. You can overcome anything when you can realize and remember who you are as spirit. The next quality of the divine is intelligence, infinite intelligence. Remember, all of these different qualities are names of God. You can call on God with Hebrew names, like in the Tree of Life, and God is an agenda. God is godness. <laughs> It's the quality of being God. It's the quality of being the source, the force, the singular force of all life. So these are names of God. And infinite intelligence is the name of God that I use a lot, just because it is Mercury. It is the planet Mercury. It is the archangel Raphael. And just like in angelic magic, the planet Mercury is the messenger of the gods, and Raphael is the messenger of the gods. If you don't know what else to to go to, you go right to Mercury, and Mercury takes care of it for you. So you can never go wrong with thinking in terms of God as infinite intelligence. Think about infinite intelligence, the quality of the divine that knows how to create babies from embryos and planets to revolve around a sun, the mystery of cell mitosis and photosynthesis and the creation of stars and galaxies. All of this infinite intelligence that science is barely scratching the surface of discovering. And science is not at odds with the divine. Science is discovering the divine as science discovers infinite intelligence. And no matter how people might want to say, oh, there's divine chaos in the universe, science can't ever prove that. Because the more you try to see that there's divine chaos in the world, you recognize how much order there is in the universe. Everything works perfectly. Everything works absolutely perfectly. You can go into microscopic levels of things and see how things operate. And it knows exactly what it's doing. You can look in nature and see how animals have innate understanding of what to do and how to do it. There is nothing but infinite intelligence. And that same intelligence is operative in you. So if you have a problem that just seems to confound you and you think, oh, this is unsolvable, there's no way out of this one, just remind yourself of infinite intelligence. Infinite intelligence knows how to create a baby out of an embryo. What makes you think it can't figure out this problem? This problem is divinely outmatched. If you can get out of the way and you can align your mind with infinite intelligence, the problem's already solved you realize it's already solved, and it's just a matter of you aligning with the solution. Infinite intelligence. The next quality of the divine is truth. Divine truth. Perfect truth. If you call upon and invoke that quality or the name divine truth, anything that's not true falls away. Truth starts to reveal itself to you. Many times we are stuck in problems where we just don't understand something, or somebody might be lying to us, or things are obscured, things don't make sense, we're, we're stuck in an illusion of some sort. Well, divine truth, we associate that with the planet Jupiter and the archangel Sakiel. Divine truth just reveals what is real, even in the midst of illusion. 
illusions are prolific. They just seem to go on and on and on, those illusions. But you call upon divine truth, and that truth literally sets you free. Because truth is true no matter what anybody says or does. There's no voting about truth. (laughs) So no matter what it is, that truth will always prevail. And all you must do is to align yourself with what is true and call upon divine truth, and it will reveal itself. Interestingly enough, the planet Jupiter and the archangel Sakiel are also associated with justice and with prosperity, which means that if there's some financial problem, it's because you need more truth. You need to be associating yourself with what the truth is in that situation. If there seems to be injustice, that means you need to be associating yourself with what is true. So you call upon truth. You allow truth to reveal itself rather than you thinking you have to come up with what's true. You allow truth to reveal itself in any situation, whether it be a financial problem, whether it be a legal problem, whether it be a problem of injustice, and all becomes well, all turns into what it is rather than what you think it is. We want truth to be revealed in any situation. And truth is constant. Truth doesn't come and go. The truth of infinite intelligence is also on the tree of life called mercy. Truth is merciful. People say, oh, you can't handle the truth or the truth hurts. That's not accurate. The truth is always divine mercy. Divine truth always brings mercy. It always brings healing. It always brings goodness and joy. So the real truth doesn't hurt. It might hurt the ego in the moment, but the ego isn't true. It always brings relief. The next quality is the quality of divine love. Love we associate with the planet Venus and the archangel Anael. Love is the ultimate healer. On the tree of life, it's called victory. Because love does conquer all, but doesn't conquer in the same way that Mars does. Love conquers in a way that outlasts everything else. Love is always constant underneath any situation. For instance, if you're trying to relax your body, notice that peace isn't something you create. It's something that is left over once the tension's gone. The same goes with love. Love and fear seem to be opposite, but love has no opposite. So fear is the thing that tries to obscure love. But Once fear is resolved, once fear falls away, and fear and tension are synonymous, all that's left is the love that exists underneath everything. Love is the force out of which you are created. The reason why the sun shines as you is because it loves you. The fact that you are loved and you are created out of an act of love is a given. It's an esoteric truth. It's an occult truth. And the reason why it's occult is because that's a hidden truth in this world. In this world, we believe that we have to earn love. In this world, we believe that we are unloved. In this world, we believe that love is a rare commodity. That's because it's hidden in this world. We need to find the occult truth, the hidden truth, that love is the only thing that exists. Love is the power out of which we are created, so that is the very essence of who we are. Anything that looks like fear is not real. It seems real in this world, yes, but when we're afraid, it's time for us to consider that quality of the divine that is called love. We need to feel the love that the universe has for us, and as a result, we can automatically understand that our response to any situation, once we realize who we are, is love. People don't want to hear this, but it's the way it is. Anything that's going on in the world that's not love wants to be love. Anybody that's acting out 
evilly, selfishly, b- brutishly. They just seem like they have absolutely no redeeming qualities about them. It's because they need love. They want love. They're crying for love in the only way they know how. So our response, once we understand who we are as love, is to bring love to every situation. But we won't do that until we accept the love that is for us. We can't love until we are loved. So our first response should be in any situation to accept the love that the universe has for us, that our Creator has for us. And then our natural response is to give that love. But you can't give something that you don't have. So first you have to realize who you are as love. And then you respond to any situation with love. And love really does conquer any situation, any problem, no matter what it is. And that's not because love is wimpy, as this world wants you to believe it is. It's because love is fierce. The next quality of the divine is called law. There are laws in this world that are at odds with the laws of the divine. That's where we have a lot of dissonance in this world rather than harmony. We have to recognize that if we are having a dissonant experience in this world, it's because we are following a law that is not the divine law. There is no law in this world that can overcome the divine. Once you understand who you are as a soul, you realize you are under no laws except for the law of the divine. When you realize that you are under no law except for the divine, all of the laws of this world either fall in line with that divine law or they disappear from you. If you're at odds with the law in this world, you must come in alignment with the divine law and then the laws of this world start to work on your behalf. You become in alignment with those laws or you have those laws completely disappear from you altogether. Either way, the divine law is, is what prevails. There are laws of the divine. You know laws of hermetics? There's laws of cause and effect, which is the bottom line law in this universe. There's laws of polarity in this world. There are laws of vibration. There are laws of gender. There's all kinds of laws which are different expressions of the one divine law. But when you recognize that God's laws are your laws, you fall in line with those laws and you become magnetized to them and they work for your benefit. But if you are out of alignment with the the laws of the universe, the divine laws, then nothing works for you. So if you're having things that just seem to never work for you, I can't get anything to work, that's because it's probably time for you to call upon divine law. The principle of law is governed by Saturn and the archangel Cassiel. And you can call upon divine law in any situation that doesn't seem to be working out for you. I call upon divine law. Divine law prevails here. Only divine law prevails. I'm under no laws except for the laws of the divine. You just keep your mind focused on divine law, and that divine law starts to demonstrate itself to you. In the Psalms, God is called the Lord often. And you can think of the Lord as being law. Instead of thinking about it as being some man in the sky, think of it as being divine law. The law. You cannot go up against it. It's impossible. And so if you're having problems, it's because you're trying to go up against the law. So You just bring yourself in alignment with the law and you understand that the law of the divine is something that makes you feel good. <laughs> It's something that brings you joy. It's something that brings everything into perfection for you because that's the law. The law is that you be happy. The law is that you be fulfilled. The law is that you be joyful and free. And so if things don't look like that in your life, it's because you're trying to defy the laws of the universe. An eighth principle that we talk about frequently is the principle of presence. The quality of presence the presence of the divine. We, that's sometimes called the fear of God in the Psalms. It means the ecstasy of God. If you're feeling the presence of God, which is associated with Uranus and the archangel Uriel, if you're feeling the presence of God, you are always in divine ecstasy. 
and there's nothing but ecstasy going for you. And it's the only kind of fear that doesn't have pain. In this world, fear always has pain attached to it. But divine fear, if you will, or what we call presence, doesn't have pain. It's only ecstasy. And the ecstasy of the infinite is your birthright. Anytime that you are feeling pain, anytime you're feeling unpleasant in this world, if you call upon the presence of the divine, infinite presence, divine presence, you start to feel the ecstasy of the divine and everything that doesn't feel like or experience itself as divine ecstasy must be dissolved in its presence. The presence of the divine. You can sit and feel the presence of the divine for as long as you can withstand it. And notice how everything shakes free and becomes different. As you start to experience your life as divine ecstasy, everything that's unlike ecstasy starts to lose its appeal to you. And then everything starts to align with that divine ecstasy. And the things which bring you the greatest joy are the things which start to manifest for you. So if you're not experiencing joy in this world, if you're experiencing pain, if things are out of alignment with you, you might want to try calling on and invoking the divine name called presence, divine presence. Those are just eight qualities. And there can be a myriad of different qualities of the divine, but those are eight that are very important for you to work with. And if you just work with those qualities, either singly or all at once, just go through the all eight, you will notice that instead of thinking about your problems, instead of thinking about what's not working in your life, you start thinking about those things, everything starts to change and starts to reflect the way that it's supposed to be for you here. And you can use those qualities of divine in very practical ways. And we talk about those in different parts of the courses that that we have here at Ariel's Corner, one of which is the Basic Angel Magic course. But there's a lot of times that we talk about the qualities of divine, including psalm magic, when it's talking about the name of God. We're talking about those qualities. This is a wonderful thing to think about and to work with, and I hope that you do, and I hope that it brings you many, many blessings. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.